Live or die, you choose. The mother of a harp seal for the first 12 days is very dedicated to birth. During these, during these 12 days, she fasts. It's a fasting process. And after that, she goes to mate again. It's quick. That's real quick, ain't it? She's right back out there to mate. 12 days. Eight weeks, the kids stay on the ice. No mother, nobody. They lose, I think it's half their body weight. Only 30% of them live throughout the first year. It's up to them to survive. Eight weeks on the ice. The mother leaves. No dad. The dad is just a mate. Sperm donor, so, so to speak. The mother leaves. So it's all up to him. All up to the kids. It was the same for me when my mom gave me birth. You know, she brought me into this world, but in a dying state. You know, we were all brought here in the dying state. Life, of course, but in the dying state. Why is that? Why is that? What'd you say? Because sin. Very good answer. What did David say? David said, behold, I was, he said, I was shaping iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. We came forth like this. It was nothing we did. Somebody had to open up the door for us. In the book of Romans, chapter 5, verse 12. Just a few amens when y'all get there. It says, wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. This is talking about Adam. You see, Adam didn't originate sin, but Adam was the door for sin. It's good that we realize that everybody points the finger at Adam, and everybody wants to, you know, um, think Adam created sin. Adam didn't create sin, but he was the door for sin. He is why it is today. He is why his descendants, he is why us, why we have to do what we have to do. Why we have to have, have to go out and get life. So because Adam sinned, we were born, in, we were born into this. How do we avoid it? Being baptized in Jesus' name. Adam is the head. He was the root. He was the root of all this. He's the reason why it is like it is. In the book of Hosea, chapter 6, verse 7. Hosea. Hosea, Hosea. <laughs> tomato, tomato. You know how it goes. Come on. You know how it goes. But this, this, this is talking about backslidden Israel. This is when Israel has started to slide back from God. This is when they decided they wanted to cut up and didn't want to do right. It says, but they like men have transgressed the covenant. They like men. What does that mean? The word men here means Adam. They like Adam have transgressed the covenant. There have they dealt treacherously against me. This is God talking. This is talking about God. They took on the character of Adam. They took on Adam's nature. So they did what he did. Not because they wanted to, but because they didn't have a choice. You know, when you're the door or something, you, you open up a way, you open up a channel. He was the channel for sin. The seed travels through the seed of man. We didn't have a choice. So when did it get started? When did it start? In Genesis chapter 2, verse 16. It says, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden they, thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, Thou shalt surely die. What is death? What does death mean to Adam? That's exactly what death is. It's separation from God. But there's three phases of death. And that's, that's mainly what I want to bring out. I'm mainly going to bring out the three phases of death. Because there's three phases in death. In that one word, death, in the, in the scriptures. Just like you said, who said separation from God? Amen. That's exactly what the first act of sin is. It's separation from God. In the book of Isaiah, 50, chapter 59, verse 2, it says, But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear you. Gee, God can't be where sin is. He can't be where sin is. He said, he said My God, my God, why art thou forsaken me? On the cross, God couldn't sit. He, can't, he couldn't sit there. But when all the sins of the world was dumped on Jesus, God had to remove his spirit. 
He can't, he can't be where sin is. You know, you know, I always think about, I always think about Miriam in the book of, I think it's the book of Numbers, chapter 12, where Aaron, Aaron and Miriam, you know, they talking, they discussing. They mad that Moses married an Ethiopian woman, you know, and they're talking, they're discussing. They say, oh, we, why, why has Moses got all the glory? Why has he got all the power? You know, we prophets just like him. We prophesy and, God, and they let God hear it. And, and what it says is, it says, and God in the, the pillar of the cloud, it came in the, came in the door, <laughs> sat in the midst of the door. So you got God in the cloud sitting right there, okay, in the doorway. And it says, what it say? You, you, you got God sitting in the doorway, and he, he says, y'all, God heard, I heard y'all. That's at the roundabout, that's what he said. I heard what y'all said about Moses. How dare y'all raise up to talk about Moses like that? I, I talk to Moses face to face. I don't just talk to Moses like that. Y'all don't understand what this is about. I talk to Moses face to face. And it, said, it says, as he, God had to leave. This is, this is what I caught out of it. It said, God, had, God left. Then he smote Miriam with leprosy. God couldn't be, the glory of God couldn't be in that temple. It couldn't be in the tabernacle when he, when he smote her with leprosy. God can't be where sin is. He can't, he can't be there. He can't be there. So God had to depart. He had to depart out the temple. God cannot be where sin is. It's very important for us as God people to notice that when we sin, it creates a separation from God instantly. Why do you think you got to go talk to your pastor? Go get it right. Because there's a separation. There has to be somebody in, in, in between. There has to be somebody in between. Genesis chapter, chapter 3, verse 6. It says, And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eye, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took up the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. The first thing they try to do is cover their wrong. You know, I, and I can attest to this. I remember when I first got saved, a couple months back, I, I started to fall back. You know, I, I started to sin. And I remember Deacon Scott would always come. He would come to my house and he would come knock on the door. And, you know, we make a noise in the house. I don't know he coming up to the door. So did everything get quiet? I'm trying to hide. I couldn't go to a gas station and see him at a gas station or any saint, rather, knowing they got the spirit of God inside of them. I couldn't sit there. I couldn't be in the, in, in the presence of a saint. I tried to hide. I had to remove myself. Sister Angie would come over and the, 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 the living room would smell like cigarettes. We had to spray, spray it down. <laughs> smell like marijuana. First thing we do was try to cover it up. You can't face that. And this is just, this is just a saint of God. I mean, we, we had talks about this. I mean, I, I couldn't be just, just not, let alone the church, I couldn't be around a saint that I knew God was dwelling inside of. I knew that they were doing right and what I was doing was wrong. So what I did was I tried to hide it. I tried to hide it. In verse 8 it says, And they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord amongst the trees of the garden. God hadn't even separated himself yet. God's still there. He's, he's, still, he's, still, he's still coming to see him. They got an occasional meeting spot. They got an occasional meeting spot. Why are they hiding? It says, And the Lord called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? Where art thou? And he said, I have heard the voice in the garden. I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. Not only does sin bring condemnation, but it, but it brings fear. We get afraid. You get very afraid when you do something wrong. Man, I, I, I can remember this. When I was, when I was backslidden, thunderstorms got me. For some reason, I always thought the rapture was going to happen during the thunderstorm. I, I, I have no idea why, what it was about it, but I mean, I was shook. God, please. You know, that, that's before I even knew I had to confess. I didn't know I had to confess to my pastor. You know, I didn't know that was required. I thought I could just t tell God, I don't work like that. No, it don't work like that. You ain't gonna, you're not going to get by like that. Please don't think you're going to get by like that. But you got, you got, to, give, you got to give Adam a little bit. It's, in verse, this, is, this is just a side note. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 9, it says, And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight. It looked good. It looked good to him. 
But not everything that look good is good for you. If the bar downtown, because they hit record sales, decide to free wine for the next two days and everybody else in town going to get it, don't mean the saints of God can go get it. Because the bank opened up and said you get free credit cards, uh, no interest rates for the first three years, and you know you got back credit cards, don't go get it. It sounds really good. Does it not sound good? This sounds good, too good to be true to me is what it sounds like. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 24, it says, So he drove out the man and placed, and he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden a cherubim and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep way of the garden. God cut him off. God had to cut him off. I can't be where sin is. You can't be here anymore. You can't be here anymore. God, God is the source of spiritual life. This is, this is, this is what it is. That's, that's what the first phase of death is. It's a, spirit, it's a spiritual disconnection. I have, to, I have to disconnect myself from you. I, I, can't, I can't help you no more. Not until you get yourself together. I can't do it. So life and sin equals death. In Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 it says, And you hath he quickened which were dead in trespasses. How do we know this is talking about the spiritual death. How do we know? He don't quit. He don't quicken dead things in the state of the ground. We was walking around just in, just just oozing lasciviousness, drinking, just, just the lusting. I was also oh filthy. I was bad. This is what we was doing when he quickened us. When he made us alive. We have God's spirit. If we just sometimes just was to sit back and think about that. You know, it hit me the other day. Just, I just sat in, not like I haven't thought about it before, but it was just like, I have God dwelling inside of me. How many people can say that? What do we have, saints? We got the God that created everything inside of us. This is amazing. This is absolutely amazing. The second phase of death is mortality, or the physical death. In Genesis 5, 5, it says, And all the days of Adam, all the days that Adam lived were 930 years, and he died. What did God say? In the day that you eat thereof, you shall surely die. Did, did Adam die that next day? Spiritually, he died that next day. He also died in that day. Because it says, it says in the days of Adam, it was 930 years. It says as a day with the Lord is a thousand years and a thousand years is one day. So he still died. He's 70, he missed the mark by 70 years. What it looked like to me. So it is appointed on the man once to die and then the judgment. It says as a tree falleth, there shall it lie. So what's next? What's next after that? In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verse 20. It says, all go into one place, and all of the dust, and all turn to dust again. That's talking about the body. Our body goes back to dust. The body of the animals, they go back to dust. Okay, it says, who knoweth the spirit of man that goeth upward? A after we, God has made us, God has made us a, a, a living soul. But he also gave us the spirit of life. When we die, our spirit goes back to God. Okay, it says, and the spirit of the beast goes downward. It ceases to exist. The spirit of the beast goes downward. It, it's nothing. God didn't make them a living soul. After they die, it's over with. Everybody cherished the animals. Everybody praised their animals. Everybody put their animals before, before human life. I know, I know a lot of people. I know a lot of people. I, I heard about a woman that died, left everything to her cat. Come on, somebody. She died, left everything to her cat. Are you serious? Somebody could have really used that money. A cat? Wow, how disrespectful. That's disrespectful. So it just seems to exist. But when, but when we die, when, we, when our spirit goes back to God, we still have a soul. That soul's got to go somewhere. It's got to go somewhere. The third stage of death is, is hell. It says, Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death have no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Once you're holy, you made it. 
Once you make the rapture, it, it's it. You made it. Ain't no more of my knees hurting, Deacon Scott. There's no more of that. Ain't no more fighting the flesh. Ain't no more I got to, oh, let me turn my head. I can't look at that. There's no more of that. After we make it, we make it. We don't have to try to fight and make it no more. We've already, we, we've already achieved it. We've already overcame. That's, that, that's, that's a very important thing for us to understand because we, once we make it now, we live holy now, we make it for eternity. We get eternal life. But you got to be holy. There's no exception to that. They don't even preach holiness no more. The apostolic churches don't even preach holiness no more. Now, ain't that a shame? That's a shame. You know, I, I feel a certain type of way about that. Because I'm serious about this. I want to make it. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm scared to, to go places. You know, in, in fellowship with other apostolic churches. I should not be afraid. I should not be afraid of what I eat. I came to eat. I want some food. I don't want prosperity. I've already been blessed with all spiritual blessings. So what do I, money, I go to work if I want money. 40 hours to get you a decent check. Amen, somebody. Folks don't want to work. 40 hours to get you a decent check. I mean, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't about be a good steward. We got to be good stewards over what God gives us. Amen? Very important. People don't understand what everlasting means. They don't understand what everlasting is. Eternity. It says God is from everlasting to everlasting. What does that mean? How can you perceive something that, never, that doesn't have a, a, a beginning or an end when everything that we know dies, lives and dies? Your mom, buildings, cathedrals, Seven, eight hundred years old. They all eventually fall down and collapse. But God has been there. He done that. He's been there and done that. He, he, he's always going to be there. How, how do our, our puny minds get that? We, 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 can't, we can't understand that. To me, I, I try. I trust it because I got faith. I trust God. He said it. I believe it. But I, I, I do not. I cannot grasp the fact of how he's from everlasting to everlasting. How he always has been. People don't understand what time is. Time is just a space that God inserted in eternity. Everlasting is still happening right now as we speak. This is it's going through, but this right now is time. This is just a place God said, boom, time. I want time right here. I got, what, 49,000 years, then, then 1,000 years for the year of Jubilee. This is it's 50 years. I'm dealing with, bam, then I'm back into eternity. I, I'm, it's forever. We have to understand. Saints, hang on. Hang on to your soul. Be careful what you eat. You can't eat from two tables. Be careful going to other churches. You can go. Pastor allows us to go. But we got to be careful what we're eating. What are they talking about? If they're talking crazy, I, I, I'll just leave. I'll just leave. Very important for us to know. So how do we choose life? How do we choose to live? Because what the nominal word will tell you, uh, recite the sinner's prayer, um, accept the Lord into your heart, and psh, you saved. Psh, go ahead, you saved. What? I'm saved. They'll tell you. But live like the devil. How you saved, but you live like the devil? How can you call yourself a Christian if you're not like Christ? How can you be like Christ without Christ's spirit? I just... To me, I just, those things just don't add up to me. Even a little bit how you can try to trick your mind into thinking that you're saved. I don't understand it. But that's totally against the scriptures. That's against, that's against the scriptures. That's not the program of God. You can't just say whatever you want to say and just that's it. Oh, I'm saved, I ain't, whatever you say is what you're saying. You believe that if you want to. Yes, ma'am. No, they don't. No, they don't. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Yes, ma'am. Exactly. It's just a smack in. The, it's just a smack in the face. Would Christ do that? Yeah. Ask somebody next time that Christian. Would Christ do that? Because it said He knew no sin, had no sin, without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. 
Would Christ do that? Ask him, um, man, you talking crazy. Would Christ do that? Man, you know we can't be just like Christ. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, amen. You see, he had to let you know. And that's your husband. He like, listen, you're not. How hard has that got to be? You know, a husband or, or a wife telling their husband, listen, you, you're not that. Yes, ma'am. Uh, uh, I can't. That makes me cringe. Mother Joanne, cut it off. As far as I'm concerned, you've been saved forever. I can't think of that. I can't, in, in my mind, I just can't see it. I cannot see that. that, that that's, but that's, that's the good thing about when, when God creates you new. You shouldn't walk out the same way you walked in. Amen? We, you, you shouldn't. It's, how can you? I remember when I got the Holy Ghost, I, I, can, I, I remember like it was yesterday. I, 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 I can imagine I seen light differently. Not might be exaggerating to a little bit, but I seen it. It, it. I seen the world out of a new set of eyes instantly. God cleaned me straight up. I, I still have things to work on. Yes, of course. We all do. We're we going to do that until the rapture. But I, I seen it a different way. Oh, so this is what they're talking about. This is, what, this is what the Holy Ghost is. Man, I got it. I knew I had it too. Ain't nobody got Ain't nobody had to tell me. I was, man, I, I, I remember it like it was yesterday. But even the disciples needed life. They had to live too. They couldn't go out and preach if they didn't have life. They had to live this too. In the book of Luke, chapter 24, verse 46. It said, unto them, thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name. How are you going to preach in his name and you ain't took on his name? You have to come into the church before you can even have this name. It don't do me no good if I walk up to the back doors. I hear him in there. What, that don't do me no good. At all. I can't get help that way. I can't get help on my couch eating Cheetos, watching ESPN. I can't do it. You got to come in here. You got to hear this word. It's got to prick your heart. Revelation chapter 2, verse 17. This is why you can't do it. It says, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh, I will give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and in that stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving him that receive it. You don't know my name unless you receive my name. How can you preach Jesus Christ and you don't have Jesus Christ? You don't even know what my name is, but you're preaching my name. That don't make sense. For somebody to be able to tell you everything about me but never met me, never had a conversation with me. Well, wouldn't say that, but they, they don't have a relationship with me by any means. By any means. It, it says, and he said, among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And that, yeah, among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. Why at Jerusalem? Anybody got an idea why at Jerusalem? In the midst of the earth. And, and Psalm 74, 12 says, For God is my king of old, working salvation in the midst of the earth. In the middle. The, the word miss means middle, and the Holy Ghost is poured out in, in, in Jerusalem. Look how God works. In the midst of the earth. And then I'm, I'm going to expand like that. Then I'm going to come out. That's good. So we got to start here. We got to start in Jerusalem. But they weren't even in Jerusalem. They were in Bethany. He said, Terry into Jerusalem. That they, it says, he said, Terry in Jerusalem. They are not in Jerusalem. They are in Beth. They are in Bethany. They're not even in Jerusalem. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Right. Wow. I never seen that. That's really good. <laughs> Amen. That's wow. Where you hear that at? That's good. But he told him to Terry. Why you tell him to Terry? He said, "You don't have power yet. I need y'all to wait. Get power. Y'all walk with me three years. Yeah, y'all cast out devils, but I need y'all to have this power right now that y'all do not have. 
I got a greater work for y'all. Tarry here and get my power. So they had to go all the way back to Jerusalem to get it. You can't do anything without God's power. Absolutely nothing. The nominal word will tell you different. They'll tell you different. It's absolutely crazy. So if the apostles baptized in Jesus' name, and they had to be filled with the, with the Holy Ghost, what makes us think we don't have to? Some people will tell you that. And if you're not studied up, if you're not prayed up, and you're not fasted up, you might mess around and believe it. Tossed and fro by every wind of doctrine. Don't know what's right or what's wrong. Now you're questioning your pastor, questioning the minister. You question it's that day when you got down there on the altar and received the Holy Ghost. You're questioning that. Some people talk real good. Talk you out your shoes. People will sell you a dream. You got salesmen that sell you a dream. Sell you a pack of Skittles and you got one in your hand. Folks are good. They're good. So we have to choose. God presented Adam with the same choice. Eat a tree of life or don't. And eat the other tree. Knowledge of good and evil and die. Don't we get that same choice today? You could be baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, or you could just be born and live, the, live like that the rest of your life. People think it takes a lot. You can be as good as you want to be. You ain't good. You ain't good without the Holy Ghost. I don't, I don't care what, you ain't that good. Your mind ain't good. You ain't nothing good about you without the Holy Ghost. Ain't nothing good without you. He said, choose ye this day who you will serve. Today, if you hear my voice, harden not your heart. This is a choice. He gave, the, he gave the Jews a choice. In Matthew 13, 15, it says, For this people, it says, For this people, heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed. Everybody saw it wasn't fair for them. They closed their own eyes. They didn't want life, they chose death. In Hebrews 11, 8, it says, By faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out and not knowing whether he went, he obeyed. He chose to follow God. I want this. I want life. So from the first man, Adam, we received death. And the second man, Adam, we have the choice. We have access to life. Just because he came don't mean you're going to get it. So it's important for us to continue to walk in God's ways. Continue to read the scriptures. Continue to be obedient. Obedience. Not just to the scriptures, but your pastor. Obedience. You can disobey in your heart, and that's scary. It's even scarier when it's within like that, and you ain't just out saying it. That's scary. So saints, we got to choose if we're going to live or die. We have to make that choice. That's all. So at this time, at this time, if we would all stand and dismiss, please.